From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. After 50 people are hurt in the collapse at Briarwood, experts explain why decks are more dangerous than you think. Decks and garage doors are probably two of the most dangerous portions of a home. Plus, no splashing this summer in Laurel will tell you what's delaying a new water park. It's a matter of getting a contractor here. And an update on Monday's water main break in downtown Billings. Good morning and welcome to Montana This Morning on this Tuesday, July 25th. I'm Augusta McDonnell. Mayor Bill Cole strongly condemning hate speech in Billings after this image of a noose hanging from a downtown light pole surfaces online. It was discovered near the Alberta Bear Theater where Lyle Lovett was performing over the weekend. His touring group reported this to authorities and while there's currently no proof the noose was placed there to threaten the band's black members, police are investigating this as a possible hate crime. Q2's Andrea Lutz has the details. Racism is real and it's still happening in America. It's a startling image with many questions behind its arrival. And while we don't know why this person put up a noose, I think we can all agree a noose has a very specific imagery, which is not welcome to Billings or we'd like to have you along. It's not a welcoming, friendly message. Billings police are investigating the noose, which surfaced over the weekend on a light pole on the 2600 block of First Avenue North near the Doubletree Hotel. This picture went viral on social media with a member of the tour company managing the Lyle Lovett band reporting it to police, believing the news to be threatening as there are four black members on the band. In response, Mayor Bill Cole took action Monday during the city council meeting, saying we condemn any hateful speech or symbols of hate in our community. The best thing to do is for community leaders and community members to pull together and say this doesn't belong in our town. And that's exactly what Sherilyn DeVries with the Montana Human Rights Network says the city should do. This does not represent our town. We are, we are here to create a sense of belonging and welcome for everyone who visits our town. Billings police taking swift action, asking for a surveillance video from the downtown Doubletree, where the hotel would have gladly supplied it. However, their system was down for maintenance. Still, it's the kind of action through love and support that DeVries says is needed. We want the reports because we want to know who's harmed and we want to be able to support them. And while the person who found the noose has yet to file a report with the Montana Human Rights Network, she says they are tracking these kinds of incidents across Montana. And so my concern here is, are, are the people who saw that noose okay? Are the people who are now seeing the noose on social media okay? Ian Billings, Andrea Lutz, MTN News. Thank you, Andrea, for that report. Of course, we'll continue to follow this investigation if they discover anything about who might have put the noose in downtown Billings. Of course, Billings is known as a place that does not welcome symbols of hate or hate crimes at all. Uh, so uh, disappointing to see this, but really great to see the mayor and uh, the police uh, department, of course, um, doing everything they can to sort this out. Yeah. Um, we've also got uh, hit a record, a record for the year, our first 100, yeah. 100 plus degree day. Yep, yesterday at the airport, we but hit 101. But it won't last. No, it won't goodness. last. Yeah. Yeah. We do have a cold front that's going to be coming through that's going to try to knock those temperatures down each day as we move forward. Now, with this cold front, it's also going to try to kick up some severe weather later today. We had some strong storms roll through yesterday with gusty winds the main concern and we'll see that again today and we'll show you that coming up here in just a bit. But there's what uh, Augusta was talking about. We hit 101. I like to call it the heat Richter scale. Our first time this year uh, of the summer in the triple digits. Don't think we're going to make it there for the rest of the week as we'll progressively get cooler. Uh, we talk about the daytime highs and the heat very mild overnight. Yesterday we were only down to about 71. Uh, very mild out there this morning as well. Had a top gust yesterday of 45 miles an hour with some of the storms coming through. We did have a little bit of rain, nothing really measurable at the airport, so we're just over half an inch for the month. So we're still pacing behind, uh, but for the year, we're still ahead. Remember, we had a very wet uh, first half of the year. Now we're just into some drier days, but daily showers and thunderstorms possible as we move forward for the rest of the week and we have that marginal risk today. 68 right now at the airport, humidity at 70%, winds out of the southwest at about 12 miles an hour. Several things to talk about with the main forecast coming up, and we'll do that here in just a wee little bit. Alrighty, Miller, thank you so much. Okay. And this morning, as victims injured in the weekend deck collapse that Briar would continue to recover, we're looking into exactly how this happened. As Q2's Jackie Coffin learns, decks aren't as safe as you might think, and in Billings, inspection requirements are lenient compared to other cities.
The culprit behind a lot of deck safety issues and even collapses starts right here where the ledger board attaches to the home. The problem with that is water and rust. It just happened. The deck collapse at Briarwood happened in mere seconds, starting with a sound people there won't soon forget. We heard this cracking sound. It sounded like breaking wood. Almost like someone dropped a cooler with ice. It's kind of what it sounded like. Nearly 50 people went to the hospital after falling to the ground. No one was under the deck at the time of the collapse. But decks pose a bigger danger than people might realize. Decks and garage doors are probably two of the most dangerous portions of a home. And Larry Daniels here, has done a lot here, of deck inspections. And I've been doing home inspections and billings for 20 years and commercial inspections for 18 years. Daniels used this home's deck to give me an example of what he looks for. When we start looking up here, this is the issue when decks start to collapse is where we haven't attached the ledger board to the rim joist of the home, okay? Sometimes we'll see a ledger board, which is great, but it's actually attached to sheathing, you know, plywood sheathing of the home. That's never good. Decks typically get inspected when they're built and optionally when they're sold. The city of Billings says it does not have a property maintenance code, so extra inspections are not required. Looking at Briarwood's tax details, the country club with a patio and porch was built in 1984. General Manager Scott Pekovich told MTN Sunday that there had been upgrades to the flooring of the deck within the last three years, but not the main structure. The undercarriage of the deck has not been replaced recently. What has been replaced was the top Trex decking. The International Association of Certified Home Inspectors estimates that of the 45 million existing decks in the United States, only 40% are completely safe. I've seen a lot of decks that uh, have been improperly attached, built, installed, and they are, they are a concern. In Billings, Jackie Coffin, MTN News. Thank you, Jackie. We're also learning more this morning about the response from Billings, Laurel and Lockwood EMTs. It took under an hour to get all 25 victims from the scene of that collapse to Billings hospitals. The good news is no one suffered life threatening injuries. Kevin Bentz was the battalion chief on duty during this incident. In his 24 years with the Billings Fire Department, he said he's never seen anything like it, but he's proud the people he works with were up for the task. I expected a lot more chaos, honestly. As smooth as everything went, I was super happy with the hospital, their response. So it worked out really well. Uh, super proud of everybody that responded. They all came in, uh, everybody knew their job, and they took care of business. First responders say they're grateful the situation wasn't worse. Some 300 people were at Briarwood on Saturday for the club's biggest golf tournament of the year. The search for a Billings woman who went missing near Hot Springs, South Dakota, continues. 34-year-old Jeannie Schweiger disappeared after abandoning her forerunner on July 17th near a hiking trail. The Fall River County Sheriff's Office is still searching the area, but say she could have gotten into a vehicle and left the area. If you see her, call 911 to make a report. Business owners on North 29th Street will have water again this morning after spending most of their Monday without it. We first reported on this water main break yesterday morning. Carter Daniels sending us this video of what the road between 1st Avenue North and Montana Avenue looked like at 2.30 a.m. Turns out it was a 10-inch break. City crews fixed it by the afternoon Monday. North 29th remained closed overnight but is expected to reopen this morning. In Laurel, city leaders are actually frustrated they're not seeing more spraying water. Not from their streets, of course, but from a new splash park that's supposed to be finished right now. Q2's Haley Monaco explains what's causing a construction holdup for the community-funded play area. On a hot day, a splash park sounds like the perfect place to be. Laurel Splash Park was estimated to be open earlier this summer. As you can see, it still looks more like the old city pool. So what's the holdup? It's not going to be up and fully operational probably until next summer. This is what the much anticipated splash park will look like and was supposed to look like by now. Instead, the space is still a pool, half filled in with gravel. <laughs> Everybody wants it right now and we want to give it to them right now. It's just. No, it's not supply issues. The city already has all the water play equipment purchased and in storage. It's not a money issue either. It'll be really nice that it's going to be paid for before it's finished. In less than a year, they've raised over $260,000.
There's something else stopping Laurel residents from beating the heat. It's a matter of getting a contractor here. Ryan Welsh with KLJ Engineering was hired by the city for the project. He says the design company the city also hired found a contractor that was supposed to start mid-May. But due to unknown circumstances, they had to revise our schedule till August, middle of August. Amy Mullaney, Laurel Community Foundation treasurer, says place-based designs out of Utah hired a contractor also out of Utah to build the new splash park. Mullaney was given a reason for the delay. Due to all the rain that we had, we had an exponential amount of rain and we had a window of opportunity to get the splash park done with the contractors at that time which was the end of May, beginning of June. They have tried to switch gears, but seem stuck with a late August construction start. We've reached out to a couple other contractors, trying to get other bids to see if we can get it done sooner, but it's looking as though we can't get it done any sooner. In Laurel, Haley Monaco, MTN News. Thank you, Haley. A Forsyth insurance agent, agent accused of stealing hundreds of thousands of dollars from customers is now federally charged with wire fraud and identity theft. 57-year-old uh, Kyleen Hagedon pleaded not guilty in billings yesterday. The indictment alleges Hagedon, the owner of Rosebud County Insurance, schemed customers out of money for several years by not transmitting her clients' payments to the insurance companies. Instead, court documents say she used the money for personal expenses. If convicted, Hagedon faces a maximum of 20 years in prison. Authorities in Bozeman carry out a massive prostitution sting, arresting 18 people in just three days. Police say it started as a human trafficking and child exploitation investigation. Law enforcement posted online ads offering sexual services under the escort names Zoe and Destiny. Each person arrested had made contact through the ads and arranged to have sex in exchange for money with the undercover personas. Police say they were surprised at just how many arrests they made. I would say that in a lot of ways it's a bigger problem than what most people probably realize. Um, the fact that we can identify 18 people in just a few days that are participating in this sort of thing should give us pause. Detectives also seized cocaine, fentanyl and other physical evidence during this investigation. Victims of human trafficking can call the Montana Human Trafficking Hotline at 833-406-STOP. And new this morning, Texas Governor Greg Abbott and the Biden administration are officially locked in a legal standoff over a barrier meant to keep migrants out of the United States. The Justice Department sued Abbott after the state refused to remove large rolling buoys in the Rio Grande. The federal government says the barriers are dangerous and unlawful, while Abbott claims he has the right to defend the Texas border. Mexico has also lodged a complaint with the U.S. saying the buoys may violate boundary and water treaties. The IRS will no, no longer make unannounced visits to taxpayer businesses and homes. It's ending the decades-old policy outside of what the De Treasury Department calls a few unique circumstances. The move is part of an effort to keep IRS workers safe and to fight against scammers who pose as IRS agents.